Hello and welcome to Spur Economics. In this video, we will discuss the theory of white test for heteroscedasticity, its step-by-step -step application, interpretation and limitations. The white test is one of the most commonly used statistical methods of detecting heteroscedasticity. Heteroscedasticity is a situation where the variance of residuals is non-constant. It violates one of the assumptions of ordinary least squares, which states that the residuals are homoscedastic or have a constant variance. In heteroscedasticity, the residuals or error terms are related to one or more of the independent variables in the model. Therefore, their values are correlated with the values of those independent variables. In general, any kind of relationship between residuals and independent variables can lead to heteroscedasticity. The white test focuses on analyzing the residuals from regression models to check for heteroscedasticity. The test is based on the chi-square distribution. Generally, it is used in conjunction with other methods such as graphical analysis. Now let us discuss the step-by-step -step application of the white test. First, we have to estimate the model. For illustration, we will consider a simple ordinary least squares model shown here. In this model, we have a dependent variable y and three independent variables x1, x2, and x3. When we estimate this model, we can obtain the residuals that are represented by mu in this equation. In step 2, we have to estimate the squared residuals, that is, mu i square. We simply squared the residuals that we estimated in the regression earlier. These squared residuals are used to run an auxiliary regression. Step 3 involves running another regression with squared residuals or mu i square as the dependent variable. The independent variables are the independent variables from the original regression x1, x2, and x3. We also include the squares of these independent variables, that is, x1 square, x2 square, and x3 square. If we also include the cross products of these independent variables, then the regression equation will look like the one shown here. It is important to note here that this white test equation will test for heteroscedasticity as well as specification. This is because we have included the cross products as well in the equation. If we want to conduct a test for pure heteroscedasticity, then we can exclude the cross products from the equation. In that case, we will include x1, x2, x3 and their squares in the equation. Therefore, we can adjust the test equation based on our objectives. In step 4, we estimate the R-square for this auxiliary regression. This R-square is used to calculate the test statistic in the next step. In the final step, we estimate the test statistic as n multiplied by R-square. Here, n is the number of observations and r square is the one obtained from the auxiliary regression. This statistic follows a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom equal to the number of independent variables in the auxiliary regression. In our example equation, this degree of freedom will be 9 when we include the cross products. For testing pure heteroscedasticity, we will exclude the cross products from auxiliary equation and the degree of freedom will be 6. The null and alternative hypothesis of the white test are shown here. We reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is greater than the critical value of chi-square. This implies that the residuals are heterosedastic. On the other hand, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity if the test statistic is less than the critical value. To apply the white test in R, we can use the white LM function from the scedastic package as shown here. In this command, white LM is the function that will apply the white test and return its results. The OLS results is the object containing results of the OLS model. Our objective is to check whether the residuals of this OLS model are heterosedastic or not. The function will automatically pick up the saved residuals from the model and apply the white test. The option interactions can be used to specify if we want to include cross-products in the test or not. 
As discussed earlier, the white test can be a test for pure heteroscedasticity if we don't include cross products of the independent variables. For that, we can specify interactions as equal to false and the function will exclude the cross products. By specifying interactions as equal to true, we will include cross products in the auxiliary regression. It implies that the test will be for heteroscedasticity as well as specification error. The results of the test often report the chi-square test statistic, degrees of freedom, and the p-value. Let us take a look at some hypothetical results here. In this table, the chi-square test statistic is equal to 15.3. In this example, we specified interactions equals false to exclude the cross products. Also, the example had two original independent variables, which means that the auxiliary regression had four independent variables. These include the two original independent variables and their squares, so we end up with four independent variables in the test regression and four degrees of freedom. The p-value here is 0.004, which is even less than 0.01. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis of homoscedasticity. We can conclude that the residuals are heterosedastic and our OLS model results may not be reliable. One of the biggest advantages of the white test is that it is easy to implement. Other tests often have their own requirements that can be restrictive. For example, the Goldfeld quant test needs us to choose some central observations, C, or the Brush Pagan test needs the residuals to be normally distributed. White test is not based on these assumptions, therefore, can be used in most situations. Still, the white test has its own limitations. It usually requires a larger dataset, especially if we have a lot of independent variables. When we include the squares of the independent variables and then their cross products, it uses up a lot of degrees of freedom because we have many independent variables in the test regression. Further, it can be a test for specification as well as heteroscedasticity. In some cases, the statistic might be significant because of specification error and not because of heteroscedasticity. Therefore, we must be careful when applying this test with cross products. Thank you for watching and happy learning!